Good morning. Welcome to Morning Motivations with Dan Stratton. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Thank you for the questions, for the comments, for the suggested topics that we bring. Today, I'm going to talk about active listening, the art of listening, and the purposed act of listening on a daily basis. It has been my experience that if we choose to learn, we choose to listen, we will learn. We choose to grow. It absolutely takes a purposed thought process around listening. I always try to remember, and this really helps me, especially as a pastor, business leader, as a coach, as someone who is often looked to for advice on matters ranging from relationships to finances to personal development, I am always reminded that we can learn from everyone. I also believe strongly that God is constantly speaking to us, and he likes to speak to us through other people. He likes to speak to us a lot of times through our points of resistance or our biases. A lot of times he will try to expand us by speaking to someone that we might not prefer, someone we might not like, someone we might not go to on a regular basis. So always keep an open ear because everywhere you look, everywhere you act, there's information there about what you're supposed to be up to and how you're supposed to be doing. And the more you stay open, the more you stay open to learn, the more you stay open to listen the more you're going to hear what's really there. And that takes an actual choice in the morning. My whole life is about harvesting vision. And there's no lack of people in it, projects going on. Our work in Cuba requires me to sit with the leaders there. I don't speak Spanish well. I don't really speak Spanish at all. So I always have to have someone with me who speaks Spanish very well. and then. When he tells me what the people are saying, then I always come back and say, okay, what did you pick up on? What did you hear? What, you know, what, do you, what are you reading between the lines? It's not just what they say. It's also what they're doing. So you're actively watching. To be, to, to be a good listener, you have to be actively watching what they're doing. Because if, if what they're saying and what they're doing don't really line up, then you need to ask questions. You need to press in. You don't need to just discount the person and write them off. That's actually the opposite of active listening. Active listening requires us to stay engaged, to keep going until you get the answer. There's a very powerful, I guess, step process that goes into active listening. But when you're actively listening, you're actively doing your very best to help that person achieve whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. It may be just trying to understand some. It may be that they are struggling to see somebody else's side of the story. And then it may be something about how they can align or resonate or get into agreement with a spouse, with a friend, or a business partner. So active listening helps people, helps you, will help you to do the same things. It will help you to understand your spouse better, understand your children better, understand your business partners or your, the people that you work for, work with, serve as a client base, et cetera. What is it that they want? What are their goals? A lot of times people don't know what they want. A lot of times people need your help as an active listener to ask some of the questions so that you understand what they're really saying and what they're really trying to accomplish. A lot of times people haven't really thought that hard to really get to that point where they're really sure and that they don't really understand that it requires communicating in a way that's clear to the person that they're speaking with. So if you develop the art of really a good listener and you're not afraid to say, hey, I didn't understand that. Or what did you mean by that? Exactly. What exactly are your goals? What are you trying to achieve? Sometimes somebody will come to you with, they may be asking you questions. You need to listen to them to see really what it is that they're asking. Sometimes 
They're trying to steer you in a direction that you don't really want to go. They're asking you questions that with an agenda, they're asking you questions because they think you should do this or they think you should go somewhere. And you need to be able to discern that. You need to be able to tell what they're doing. And you can't do that if you're just responding to their questions. You have to be listening not only to what the question is, but you have to be listening a little more deeply to why they're asking the question, what their motivations might be, and what it is they're trying to accomplish through this questioning. And so that's an active part of listening. I always think of, of listening on a really strong level, and I teach this when I teach people how to pray. I always say, you have to listen to agree. You have to actively participate to agree. Clearly, you can't be thinking about 50 other things if you're in a conversation with someone. I know me, I know that sometimes I could be sitting in a room with somebody and I am somewhere else. I'm not really actively engaged in the conversation at hand. Sometimes those conversations don't re require total attention. Sometimes they're about whatever's going on during the day. Sometimes they're about just stuff you've talked about a thousand times before. But what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about active listening, I'm talking about listening to serve, listening to help somebody solve a problem, listening to help someone gain perspective, listening to value that person. I find in my daily walk that when I truly listen to someone and I truly take the time to ask the question, what are you really saying? I use a tool in a book that I've written called The Five Questions. But what would you do? What would you do in this situation if you knew you'd be successful? Okay, so what exactly are you trying to achieve? Don't let the fear of failure, don't let the fear of resistance stop you. If, what is it exactly that you would like to achieve here? What is it? And then I use this tool, which is, it's a, it's a listening tool, okay? What can you do today? What's your next smallest doable step? What can you do today to move that forward? Now, I'm listening. I'm asking these questions. People aren't going to answer these questions if they don't feel like you're going to help them in some way. They got to know that you care, that you're going to point them in the right direction, that you might make a phone call on their behalf, or you might help them in some way. So you ask them, listen. What would you do? What is it that you're really trying to accomplish today? What's your next smallest doable step? And then when you see them, because you're listening, right? You're paying close attention to what they're saying. You can see them step back and you can see them kind of go blank or space out a little bit. And you say, no, what's bothering you? What's the obstacle right there? What is it that causes you to feel like you're going to get your butt kicked again or that you just don't want to even try? What is it? See, so you're listening. You got to have some tools to listen. And then you ask them that question and they may give you an answer. Last time I did this, I had a big argument with my boss. Last time I did this, I had an issue. So you start thinking about that. And then I always try to get people to a place where they feel good. So I say, well, what's going good in your life? What's going good? See, active listening requires interest in the person you're listening to and a set of tools. So that it helps you to actually get involved with what's going on. I say, you know, what's going good? Are you healthy? You have a couple of good relationships that are going on. You got some money in the bank. You got some plans. You got a vacation plan. You got some friends coming to see. You got a reunion. You got to go see family. What are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? And then I bring them back to the first question and I say, no kidding. What, what visualize for me what a miracle would look like? If you accomplish these goals, what would that be? Now, this is a tool that helps me listen. Now, I was telling you about Cuba. On Monday, this coming week, I'm going to be in the prisons with two leaders. One is the leader of the Parchment prison system, Reggie. The other one is the leader of the Jackson prison system, which is really the biggest prison or penitentiary in the state of Mississippi. And he works directly with the commissioner of all prisons in Mississippi. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to listen to them because I want them to begin to write their vision in a manner that they can begin to create a path forward 
that allows other people to see themselves in that vision. I'm going to listen carefully. I'm going to ask them the questions. I'm going to help them to do this. If you can learn the skill of being a little bit of a provocative listener, a person who listens to really help people to understand their intent, their goals, people go through life and they have a tendency to begin to give up. They begin to give, they begin to think that nothing's going to work in their life. They've tried so many things. And so they, they stop really dreaming. They stop really thinking. And the active listener is such a powerful and rare individual who actually cares enough to say, you know, what, what do you think God created you for? What do you think your purpose is? What do you think, you know, you can really have an impact in? And so these two men, they both spent a large part of their life behind bars in Angola, in the big prison system in Louisiana. And that's where I met them years ago. And now I'm sitting with them and I'm trying to capture their vision. I'm telling them what you're thinking about, what is important. It's very important. So I will help you write it down. That's another part of active listening. A lot of people don't write well. They have an aversion to writing. They don't like to write. So I'm going to listen to Reggie. I'm going to listen to George. And we're going to talk these things out. I'm going to ask him, what do you want to do? How do you want to do it? What's the end purpose of that goal? And I'm going to be asking, what would you do if you knew you would succeed? Okay. What do you see as the option? Staffing, funding, equipment, time. All those things, I'm going to ask them those very probing questions. And then I'm going to say to them, let's write the vision. This is out of the book of Habakkuk. For those of you who are Bible people, this stuff works if you're not a Bible person. Write the vision. Write the vision. Make it plain so that you understand it, but also make it plain so that other people understand it. And when you share this vision with other people, be an active listener, I'll tell them. I'll say, all right, if I read this vision, we're going to create a system where every year we're going to develop, discover and develop 50 inmates who can go out and teach Bible studies throughout the prison system in Mississippi. I'm just telling you what they've told me every year. So within 10 years, we'll have 500, right? But those 500 can develop other people. We may even have more because of it, and we'll get the gospel preached throughout prison system in Mississippi, and we'll create a prototype so we can take this to other states. So we will actively listen, help them to write. Again, an active listener is a willing helper, is a willing servant. And then I make sure between the two of them, because they have to work together, that they agree. So I'll ask Reggie, what did you mean by that? And then I'll ask George, what did you mean by that? And then I'll write it down. And I'll say, is that what you meant to say? So it's active listening is harvesting a thought, is coming into agreement, is working towards alignment, is feeling a resonance, a resonance, an alignment where everybody feels heard, where everybody feels valuable, and where everybody feels a little bit uncomfortable because they've been probed and provoked, provoked to action provoked to creativity, provoked to love, provoked to serve. So active listening isn't just hearing. It's hearing with a purpose. It's hearing to create. It's listening to magnify the person you're listening to. It's listening to assist. I'm listening to you today. I want to hear what you have to say. God has placed a vision on your heart. It's time for you to begin to work these principles and begin to be motivated towards valuing your life and the lives of those around you. Everyone that God is going to send to you today is valuable. Every person, every conversation, if you have ears to hear, is going to teach you something. And especially pay attention to those people that come across your path, who in their little, your little world, you don't like them because God is trying to get you to love everybody. 
points of the year will always speak to us. I've learned this over my life through my points of prejudice because he's trying to get me to be less prejudiced. So he may speak to me to somebody that in the past I've discounted in some way. He's like, oh, look how valuable. And I'm pretty developed in this now, so I don't have the biases I once had. I don't have a tendency to discriminate or to neglect or not to listen that I once had. See, this has becomes practice. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Dan Stratton. You've been listening to Morning Motivations with Dan Stratton. Send us your questions, your comments. I'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in.